also known as Obsessive Costuming Dude, author of the Star Trek Costume Guide, and I have with me here an original, screen-used Dr. Pulaski medical smock. Now, if you've read my costume analysis, you know she wore quite a few different ones over the course of Season 2, and this is the one she wore the very first episode that year, The Child, when Dr. Pulaski's character was first introduced, and Dorinda Rice Wood's first episode as costume designer on The Next Generation. If you haven't read my costume analysis, you can check it out on my blog, www.startrekcostumeguide.com. It's also available as a free PDF download. But I've been studying this thing, and I've documented it pretty extensively on the blog, but I wanted to give you a video tour of the costume, just because I can, and because it's neat. I have a special treat at the end of the video for you. And I want to thank Angelo Cafaldi for letting me examine this costume, making this video possible, and allowing me to share my research with you here and on the blog. So let's take a look at it. All right, go on handheld. So the fabric is jumbo spandex again. Except for the neckline and yoke trim. It's a different fabric and uh, they don't quite match either. Just like on the uh, on the scant that I did a video tour of a while back. And you can see the yoke shaping is kind of like the other um, early TNG uniforms where there's no arms eye uh, upper arms eye. In a traditional sense, there's just the piping and the yoke extends all the way onto the sleeve. See, we have uh, bust darts here. And there's this uh, kind of waistband thing. Oh, my knees. They also have pockets. It's pretty cool. Don't see a lot of those in Star Trek, uh, at least until Enterprise. And you can see there's a uh, edge stitching around the pocket, and the pocket welts themselves are jumbo spandex. And so's the uh, pocket facing. And the pockets have actually been hand sewn closed, so they're not actually usable. You can't actually stick your hand in there. And you can see here on the side, there's this black mesh insert, which was news to me because in the show, you know, she wore the black trousers. And um, it looked just like you know, there's a split in the uh, in the fabric, and it just looked black. So I guess this was a neat way to um, kind of hold it in place. Pretty neat. And on the back, you can see there's no center back seam, but we do have a couple darts back here couple fitting darts to help it hug the back. And then under here, we look underneath, you can see there's actually a black mesh um, sort of panty attached to the inside. Which I guess if um, is to hold it in place so if she you know reached forward or up or something you know this wouldn't come riding up and um, you know if she twisted around then um, you know this wouldn't twist too far in either direction so that helps hold it in place that's pretty neat and you can look and uh, see here the um, the bottom isn't hemmed it's just the uh, it's just the raw edge of the jumbo spandex. Oh, my camera doesn't want to focus. I have a really hard time with jumbo spandex. I don't know why. Yeah, there we go. So 
So you can see it's just cut to length. It's not hemmed. It's weird. But the sleeves are hemmed. Just not the bottom. I mean, it's uh, it's jumbo spandex. It's not like it's gonna, you know, really fray. Look, it's been, you know, thirty odd years, and it's still, you know, not not in bad shape. But it's just weird. Think about all the hemming on the TNG scants. Yeah, you know, I really feel like this thing was um, probably made in a rush. So now I'll show you how it's um, zipped and unzipped. So just like the TNG jumpsuits, there's some hook and eye closures up top. Like that, you undo. There are three of them. And then there's an invisible zipper. Which we unzip. And uh, you can see the top of the zipper tape has been tacked down. Or there's that um, excess past where the zipper top uh, stops. And the top of the zipper is left hanging free. So that's a you know common theme through the modern era of uh, Star Trek costumes. The top of the zipper hanging free and some hook and eye closures up top. You can see there's quite a bit of seam allowance in the front. Full inch on each side. So let me uh, let me step back here. Well, I'm just gonna. You can see since it's an invisible zipper, it doesn't um, unzip all the way. It's not a separating zipper. It only goes down to here, and um, the smock is sewn closed beneath, beneath the zipper. So, you have a thing that's, um, it doesn't really separate all that far. And because of the um, panty that's attached to the interior, you actually have to step into it. So if you're putting this on, you would put your leg through uh, both sides, just like you were putting on underwear, step into it, pull it up, you know, put your arms through the sleeves, and then, and then zip it up, just like just like if you were putting on a jumpsuit, basically. So, only zips down down to here, which um, I think that's part of why these uh, splits in the sides are here too, because they they stretch some and they uh, give a uh, an additional fullness in the hips, so help you get it on. And also, um, the back, which I'll show you in just a second. So here's what I was talking about with the um, the front and the back and the zipper. So you can see on the front, let me zoom in, the jumbo spandex was cut like the other early TNG era uniforms with the uh, stretch going up and down. But the back was cut so that the stretch goes from side to side like you would think two-way stretch spandex would uh would be cut so it stretches around the wearer's body and i think that it was done that way because the invisible zipper uh, wasn't separating and since for most people the shoulders and chest and uh, hips are wider or around than the waist, that poses a big problem when it comes to, um, you know, putting something on with a non-separating invisible zipper. So we have the, um, the side inserts, which give some additional fullness, uh, about four inches at the widest on each side, and we have the back that stretches uh, around the wearer. So I think those are to compensate for the uh, for the non-separating invisible zipper. At least, at least that's my theory. Probably the most surprising thing to me about this costume was the color. If you remember season two, or if you just look at some screen caps or whatever, you can see it. It it looked blue. 
I mean, it, it looked full on blue, not uh, not teal. And this is very obviously teal. It's a bluish teal, but it's definitely it's definitely teal. And I grabbed some thread to um, kind of do a color match. This is Coates and Clark, color fifty three eighty. 5380 called dark teal it's a pretty uh, pretty darn close color match hope you can see it okay so yeah you can go to the store check it out you can see you know it's a full-on teal but uh, like I said before the um, the yoke trim the neckline trim are a slightly different color. It's a lighter, um, kind of a lighter bluer teal. And the best that I found for that is Guterman, color 635. I'll show you here. It's not a bad match. It's not perfect. It's pretty close. I'll give you a close up of the uh, body thread. I took some photos in various lighting situations too, so you can check those out on the blog. So that's a dark teal. And for some reason, even though this fabric is teal, I was noticing as I was photographing it, it often photographs as blue, just full on blue. I don't know what happens to the uh, <laughs> to the yellow in the in the fabric when you photograph it, but I mean, whatever, man. <laughs> so here are the two thread colors for the, um, the body and the piping. Here's what they. Here's what they look like just on the uh, on the costume. So, like I was saying, this thing photographs is blue, especially in a bright light. Like I have a I have a photography light right beside me to help my camera focus and make sure it's well lit. But if I turn that off. This is just normal uh, normal room lighting. You can see it doesn't look as blue. It looks more teal. I mean, it's a bluish teal for sure. It's, uh, it's definitely teal. This photographs is blue, especially under flash. When I use the flash on my camera, oh my goodness. Uh, it just completely it kills the yellow and it only takes the takes the blue. So I can see, now that I've seen this fabric in person, I can totally see why even though it's teal, it would it would uh, register as blue on camera. I mean, it probably looks blue right now. I mean, and I'm filming on a DSLR and the uh, the show was shot on film, so I have no idea whatever whatever it is that makes this fabric look, uh, look blue, even though it's teal. Just, uh, it's not my on my area of expertise. Speaking of areas of expertise, I really wish my friend Michael Cowart was here to examine this costume with me because as you can see, armpit stains. And uh, Michael could probably ID that pretty fast. He knows a lot about a lot of things. And um, if he were here, he could probably tell us what that was. The original deodorant, I mean. I flipped it inside out so we can take a look at the interior. You can see the shoulder pads attached with some uh, snaps, a couple snaps hand sewn to the shoulder seam allowances, which were cut with pinking shears. You can see the neckline trim was catch stitched to the underside. We have our hook and eye closures, top of our invisible zipper left hanging free, and these seam allowances were tacked into place on the underside by hand. So were the um, outer corners of the uh, of the yoke. 
just to help hold those open. Here we can see the bust darts. And they were pressed open over the stitch line. Um, you'd think they'd be pressed down, but maybe that caused too big of a bulge, so it was just pressed open to uh, more evenly distribute that fabric. It's pretty neat. See the waistband was reinforced with a fusible interfacing. A knit fusible by the uh, by the looks of it. You can see the seam allowances were trimmed down over here and trimmed out over here, but not right here. And then here's our um, panty, black mesh panty that you saw earlier. You can see there's just a slit cut in it for the zipper. Nothing fancy. It was just tacked into place up here by hand. And then it was machine sewn up here at the, uh, the waistband. Seam allowances. Just the raw edge, no hemming. Just like that. And then the, uh, the slit just, you know, kind of stops around the bottom of the zipper. And for some reason, under here, the zipper uh, seam allowance, the front seam allowance, has what looks like some bias cut uh, hair canvas. hand sewn to it. It's about three quarters of an inch wide, pressed in half. It's a, uh, comparable in weight to B. Black & Sons heavyweight uh, hair canvas or heavyweight HIMO. Uh, not sure what they call it. Hang on. I have a sample book handy here. Where is it? It's the medium weight, lightweight, heavyweight high mode. That's um, about the weight of it. Obviously, it's not the same stuff, but um, it's there for some reason. And also, pocket bags for the pocket. It's kind of a silky uh, fabric, but it feels kind of like synthetic too. So maybe lining, it's like a teal lining, I guess. And um, see, it's like it's properly sewn in. And the top of the pocket bag is sewn onto the waistband uh, seam allowances. So, in theory, these should be fun functional pockets. I mean, it looks like they were originally intended to be functional pockets. Um, but for some reason, they were hands-on closed. So, if they weren't intended to be functional, you know, why the pocket bag? I mean, it's just my theory. I, I guess either um, the, the, the pockets caused a problem, like maybe putting things in the pockets, like caused it to stretch down, especially since the spandex stretch this way on the front, and maybe the uh, the pocket bag kind of uh, did some peekaboo underneath the smock, maybe. Um, or maybe it just pulled the pocket opening, like maybe the pocket gaped too far open. I, I don't know. Um, or maybe Dorinda Rice Wood, this being her first episode, maybe she didn't know that uh, one of the kind of the uh, edicts of Gene Roddenberry, apparently, of somebody about Star Trek was, uh, you know, no pockets, no zippers, no pockets. Well, she knew the zippers thing, because look, the, the zipper, you can't see it, it's invisible, but uh, maybe someone told her no pockets, and so that's why, you know, none of the rest of Dr. Pulaski's uniforms had pockets. She's, maybe she didn't know. And um, I don't know. So maybe it was hand-sewn clothes just to keep... Uh, uh, so there wouldn't be temptation for the actress, uh, Diana Maldar, to kind of put her hand in the pocket and uh, wave it around. Or maybe maybe she had her hands in it. Maybe she had a lot of pocket acting, you know, like uh, David Tennant. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know, but you can see, here's the pocket. You see the pocket welts. Well, you can see the uh, pocket area that was stabilized with the fusible that's, you know, surprise, surprise, come undone. Good for temporary things. The uh, pocket welts are stabilized with the fusible too. But then the pocket was hand sewn closed. So, you know, whatever. On the um, on the back, the uh, the top of the uh, black mesh panty thing was hemmed. There's an inch turned under. And it's stitched down about a quarter inch from the edge and inside that is a length of half inch elastic I guess just to uh, you know keep it from sagging or gaping open or doing anything weird but um well here you can see just the elastic And you can see the front and the back are just hand sewn there. I mean, the front was machine sewn over here, but you can see the elastic is tacked to the front by hand. And then the, uh, the outer edge of the back panty is just tacked to the front by hand. Again, I really get the feeling this was done in a hurry. I really feel like it was. Look at these sleeve seam allowances. You can see it's like, it's huge, it's three quarters of an inch up here. Then it goes all the way down to, you know, a half inch down here. The, uh, the other seam though, it's half inch all the way down. And check this out. Check out these seam allowances on the front. <laughs> like it's barely, it's like an eighth of an inch. It's barely anything there. I feel like this was just uh, whipped up and then fitted on her and they just pinned it into place. Like they had a general pattern that would probably fit. And then so they just kind of like uh, put it on her, took it in here, let it out here. Got a billion pins some chalk lines and just went and sewed it for that first episode. That's my impression. That's my impression anyway. And finally you can see here the sleeves are hemmed and uh, kept stitched to the underside with some matching teal thread. But then like I said before the bottom's not hemmed. It's just the it's just the raw edge of the uh, the spandex. That was pretty neat, wasn't it? And now, as promised, a special treat. I made a copy of this costume's pattern, and I patterned it using a technique that I learned from this book, 101 Sewing Secrets from the Singer Reference Library. I'll put a link to this book down below for those of you who want to check it out. But I'm putting the pattern that I derived from this costume on the Star Trek costume guide where you can download it for free. Now, these are big pages. They're large format engineering prints, so you'll probably have to have it printed at your local copy and print shop, but it's there on the blog for you to check out for free. And I'm also using the pattern that I derived from this costume um, and grading it into multiple sizes for the Bad Wolf costumes pattern, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to my channel for more video tours, costume analyses, and sewing tutorials.